jail sees itself having a very specific role, and that is to increase support for criminal justice reform in rural areas and repair that urban-rural connection that's been um, damaged by the prison industry, honestly. And so we like to go to as many upstate rural fairs and festivals as we can every summer. This is where we know rural people come out. Uh, there's dairy parades all over the state in June. And we learned pretty early on that the best way to get a stranger to take something out of your hand, a pamphlet, is to wear a costume, to look a little bit ridiculous. And we use theater and music and to bring the spirit of those events out and try and make connections with people. that's not centered around the prison economy, but around a healthy economic alternative, agriculture. So this is a grassroots movement. Join us for the rest of this parade. We're going to spread the word throughout the festival. presentation on what milk and jails have to do with one another. And we're going to start with a couple of facts about New York State's prison system. Fact number one, New York State's prison system is too big. The Department of Correctional Services is the largest agency in New York State. It has an annual budget of $3.5 billion and employs over 30,000 people in New York State. It's bigger than the Department of Education, the Department of Agriculture, Department of Transportation, this is it. While the majority of people who buy and sell drugs in New York State are white, 80 to 90% of people who are locked up for drug offenses are black and Latino, and has a disproportionate impact on communities of color. Now, why the hell are we focusing on milk? Well, as I mentioned, there's a lot of dairy farmers in upstate New York. In fact, there's 6,000 dairy farmers in upstate New York. And those dairy farmers are really vulnerable. The price that they get for their milk is chosen by the federal government. Sometimes it doesn't actually meet their costs. And so what we're doing is building an alliance with those farmers through Milk Not Jails. We've started a social enterprise. This is our logo right here. Any farmers that support our criminal justice campaign, we help them distribute their products here in New York City. Uh, we like animals. We enjoy raising animals, and that's why we do it. But there's, there's no money in it, you know. So I understand why what happened up there happened. As far as the, the, the number of beds they have, lock beds. Uh -huh. So, um, because the choice was poverty or a paycheck. Taxes, we have to support the food industry because we our food supply I feel is tainted by greed there has to be a way to support this kind of farm and make it profitable and make it so so young people are not forced to work in lockups but that's the choice right now that's the choice we have our ideal vision for the Milk Not Jail social enterprise is that it be a producer and worker owned business. So that the farmers that are producing the products for Milk Not Jail's uh, political line of dairy products and our sales, marketing and distribution force in the city are all invested in the business, all making decisions for it and figuring out what to do with the profits. So we see marketing, sales and distribution uh, in, in the city as a way that we can employ formerly incarcerated people um, and really build economic power for people who are so disenfranchised in the employment industry. In these towns that prisons are built in, the only time they get to um, communicate with someone's, someone black or Latino is by them being a convict. So by me speaking to individuals and giving them enlightenment on on who, on who I am, and not just seeing me as a, a DIN number 
or even um, an inmate. So that played a major role because when I went to prison, it was like a, um, a gift and a curse. When I started educating myself on everything I could, life period, the economic system, the political system, every system that was developed for the con controlling people, period. When I started doing that, then I started, the sadness started coming inside of me for all the wrong I have done to people and the families I done broke, you understand? Where it's trying to get money or whatever the case might be. And that's when I started dealing with change. That's when I started wanting to change. That's when I started wanting to change others, you know? So um, by me being a big influence and by individuals looking at me as being, yo, he's a, one of the head bloods, if he could change, then I can. I was doing the Osborne Association. You know, they help you with jobs and people that was incarcerated that come home. And she was doing a presentation there and she was telling us about the Milk Not Gels. And um, it, was some good, it was some good information on there. She was telling us about it. It was, it was a good opportunity. You know, it was from coming from um, being incarcerated, coming home and looking for different jobs, just kind of hectic. So she just, she just gave me an opportunity to work. And, um, you know, many other people don't give you the opportunity because they look at your felony and see you got two, three felonies. And they don't, they don't even, they don't even base it on your work ethic, you know. But working with her and, and getting this milk stuff is, is good. It's a good. It's a good idea. I like it. I've been doing it. I do the driving around all the city. Bronx, Queens, he's in Manhattan, downtown Manhattan, Harlem. I've been up in Yonkers. And everybody want to know what's milk not gels. So I explain a little bit to them and then I give them like the panelists we have. And I give it out so they can get a little more research on it. The criminal justice movement hasn't been able to answer this question, what's the alternative economic opportunity? So we just decided to come up with an answer. It might not be the right answer, we don't really know, you know? But the point is, let's start the conversation. And we know that the criminal justice movement, which is very New York City focused, can't come up with this idea on its own. You know, we don't live in rural New York. We need to build a relationship with people in rural New York to figure out what kind of regional economic alternatives we need. We're pretty sure the dairy industry is involved because it is such a big part of rural New York. 